Good evening. I wrap Stephen of Linen Associates with your spider ETF wrap up. And this wrap up is for, where are we now? Thursday, January 14th, 2021, getting on to 6.30 p.m. Central Time. So as we look at the markets, we should keep in the back of our mind that Martin Luther King Day is on Monday. The markets are closed. So if you don't get out of markets tomorrow, for whatever reason, you won't have until Tuesday where you can generally do so. Just something in passing. Tonight we're going to see a plan proposed by President-elect Biden about giving Americans that are in need another $1,400 stimulus check, about raising the minimum wage to $15. But more important to me is this is now laying out what his first spending part is, and will it pass a Democratic-controlled Congress, and obviously it'll be signed by him if it's brought to him. So this is going to be the very first test. The next test after that, they're saying, will be the infrastructure spending. So the market's looking at this, and obviously you're getting your swings in your bonds and your notes because they're worried about higher interest rates. Fed Chair Powell today spoke in a virtual conference. When asked about uh, raising interest rates, he made it very clear, now is not the time. And then he said again that the market will be well telegraphed as to what the Fed's intentions are should they decide to change course. It's his way of saying they're doing nothing. When asked, is inflation running a little hot? Well, inflation hasn't met their goals. Very clear. So let's take a look and see what we've got on the biotech. You know this is one of the favorites. And here's the market at a new high. When we take a look on the chart at XBI, the swing line, higher lows higher highs. The market held its challenge of what I call the line in the sand, the 18-day average of closes. The target is 154.85, so let's applaud it. This, this is a nice uh, looking chart, and you're overbought. Do I think the pros will step out if they get to that Bollinger Band top? I think they'll take some money off the table. When I look at SMH, the semiconductor, all we keep hearing is, boy, uh, what's going on with the Taiwan semiconductor and how, the shortages that we're seeing? Well, that's all the propellant you need for this market to go higher. There's a phenomena going on, and the phenomena is there's not enough stock out there. I, I know that sounds funny, but investors are racing in, and when you don't have enough stock, you drive stock prices higher. Even the IPOs that are coming out, they come out and they go up immediately 50%, 100%. What's that about? They can't price them better? I don't know. But if you take a look, every day you're hitting that upper Bollinger Band. That's called that Gorilla Glue trade. It's, it's caused an embedded reading, which tells me that even on breaks, if we can get them, the market will be well supported. If you lose the embedded reading with the slow stochastic closing under 80, then there'd be a cause for concern that you're gonna get a correction possibly back towards that 18-day average. But you're not even close to that at this point. We then move to the industrial sector, trend up. It's almost every market, higher lows, higher highs. You get up to the upper Bollinger Band level and you run into the resistance. You didn't get there today, you missed it by 12 cents, but you got here the other day, you backed off and now you're back up to it. Until the market says no to that, watch out. In other words, that's your resistance point. You're overbought, not embedded. In the energy sector, this is a market that is trying to force the market to embed. Now, both numbers over 80 today. They were over 80 yesterday and the day before, no. That's why you need to get that other number over 80. Tomorrow's an important day in that market. It's amazing how the market just latched in since the Saudis said that they were going to cut their production a million barrels a day. But if you're watching the differential also between WTI and Brent crude, it's crashing in where the two prices uh, just recently, I think over the past four days, they narrowed in a dollar. That's rather dramatic. In the NASDAQ, the resistance point is the upper Bollinger Band. You're basically in a sideways action with divergence. Momentum's trying to be down. The trend is up. The bias is up. And you keep hitting that upper resistance point. Longer term, still looks bullish to me. EFA, this is a very crowded trade, but bullish. I can't say that the analysts are wrong. I don't know any analyst on TV that I've seen I don't know, 30 days? I'd like to know. 
that is saying, oh, I want money in emerging markets. They all do. So you've got what's called a crowded trade. The market recently made an all-time high, backed off, and we'll see where it goes. But it's still bullish until you lose that embedded reading. Target price, still the 76.32 level. Gold is still bearish, but paying attention, as I pointed out to you, to this 200-day moving average, that's called a value number for the longer-term trader. They're looking at that and they're saying, well, if they're going to get inflation and the Fed's talking about it, how can gold not be good here? The other side of the argument is a chartist, it's a bearish chart. It is oversold. It's in a support zone between that 200-day average to 170.75, the uh, lower Bollinger Band, but I don't see any reason to be long. I only see reasons to be what? On the bear side, but would I deploy me, tell a client to deploy money now to the short side in an oversold condition? One of my filters is saying no. In the gold miners, oversold, downtrend, clean, re you can see the resistance here. It's the uh, combination of the red line, the 18-day average, and the 200-day. The market just let everything go, and now it's consolidating. Will that consolidation lead to another leg to the downside for 34.37? Or will it resolve itself by starting to turn up, which means a challenge of those numbers? Time will tell. TLT, I was expecting a bounce to the right-hand side of the uh, Bollinger Band. You had four days in a row under it. It's rare that you get past five. Futures especially. It appears to me from, from what I watch on ETFs, they can go a little longer than what the futures do. But the futures are different, and they typically five is pushing it. You can count in your hand the amount of markets in a year that will go on a front month contract where all the volume is beyond five in a row before moving to the right hand side. It is not a short sale playing for that. It can move to the right hand side and still be a higher market. Just remember, you gotta learn how to play with those things. That's gonna be that mini courses that I'm laying out as I'm talking to you. For recording them, it takes me an afternoon and that's it. So I'm just laying everything out right now. But oversold, still very much in a downtrend. And last on the Euro currency, I've been telling you, I don't think you wanna be pressing this market beyond the Bollinger Band. The trend is down, we've come down hard. We'll see what happens over the next few days, but there's going to be program after program around the world where people spend money to bring their economies out of the abyss that COVID-19 did cause. So you want to be ready for that. So with that, I'm I. Rapstein. You have yourself a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow.